Hi everyone and welcome to another guide from SkySiv. Uh, my name is Sam and today I'm going to take you through an example of how to model a hinge connection uh, or a hinge joint between two members in structural analysis software. In this case we're using SkySiv Structural 3D um, and we're basing this on um, a tutorial that we have in our uh, blog um, which, which explains what is a hinge joint um, and how we can model these sorts of connections and what they mean from a technical perspective. Um, so just a simple uh, background on what is a hinge joint. So it's basically uh, the way we're connecting two members. So if you can imagine a very rigid um, connection, if I force uh, apply a force in any um, direction or rotation, it's gonna transfer that force to the adjacent member or the connected member. A hinge joint has a released uh, degree of freedom in the, in the Z rotation, which allows it to pivot and rotate like so. Uh, and so it kind of manages the different types of forces that are transferred from one member to the other um, and it's very very important um, in, in structures such as uh, trusses or in bridges um, because they're utilizing uh, the forces differently which we'll see uh, later in the video. So it's really important to get these types of connections right um, because they can drastically alter the, the accuracy of your model um, because uh, these two types of connections do behave um, very differently. Uh, and so it's important to understand these principles and make sure that you're modeling them correctly uh, in your structure. Um, so, uh, so in this example, we're going to take a, a very simple model. So here we're looking at a simple beam that's supported um, by fixed supports at either end with an applied load here at the midpoint of this first member. And we're going to create a hinge here at node 2. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now in the software. So um, all we need to do is just select one of these members. So I'm going to select member 2. Um, and we're looking at the node end fixity. So we, this is where we control um, what degrees of freedom these member ends have um, and how they're able to rotate or move. And what we're going to do is, is create a, um, a hinge here by, um, we can either click truss and that will automatically adjust my node uh, A and B fixities. Or in this case, let's go custom, um, which will allow me to fully control and customize the end, end fixities for either member. And I can see node A is, uh, sorry, is node two right here. So I'm gonna make that my um, pin or my uh, hinge, and I'm gonna make do that by releasing it with the R in the final um, degree of freedom, which is the Z rotation. So um, if you have any questions with these, you can always hover over the I, that will give you a little bit more of an explanation. Or if you click it, click through there, um, it'll take you to our documentation page which has videos and other articles that, that help you understand these fixity codes. Um, but um, that, that's really denoting that it's rotating in the, the Z um, rotation. So sorry, it's free to move in the Z rotation. And then on the node B fixity, I'm gonna make that fully fixed, which is just six Fs. And I'm gonna apply that to that member too. And I can see there's a small dot here that's now representing that this is no longer a fixed connection. Um, and if I hover over it, it's telling me that that is um, released in the Z uh, rotation. And I can see in this end, this is still fully fixed, which um, if I click it again, I can confirm my uh, fixity at node B um, is fully fixed. So that's it. That's as, uh, all you have to do to create a, a hinge connection at this point. Um, and now we're gonna solve it and just look at the different behavior that we'll receive from this type of model as opposed to a fully fixed uh, connection here at node two. Um, and there's, there's some particular behavior that we can look out for. Um, one is that there will never be a, a bending moment force at the hinge connection. Um, because it's free to rotate at that, po rotate at that point, um, it can't contain any um, bending moment force at that location. Um, we can also see the displacement and how it behaves. Um, it's sort of a, it looks like it's, a, it's sort of coming to a point um, because it is rotating. It has that um, ability to, to um, freely displace in that um, in that in that way. So if I was to compare this to uh, say the bending moment force of a fully fixed connection, so this is one where we haven't applied um, the release the member and fixity here. Um, we can see there is a bending moment force here and the behavior between them is, um, is quite different um, and the results are obviously a lot different as well. So you can see by releasing that degree of freedom, um, we've actually increased the bending moment um, force at, at the ends of the members. Um, and yeah, some of the displacement um, behavior is a little bit different as well. So because it's a rigid fixed member, you can see it's just displacing. Um, how you would normally imagine a fully fixed member to displace. Um, we can also look at some other models. So um, 
Here we have just a single point load. Um, we've got a connection here and I've made this um, a hinge connection. And looking at the moment, um, this is where we also start to see the different um, forces that are sort of translated from one member to the other. So here I can see there's a large buildup of bending moment force, but none of that bending moment force is transferred to this uh, member two here. Uh, likewise, there's a lot of shear force, but again, none of that has been um, transferred to the, to the member connected to, um, uh, to it at that point. And um, what we will see is that a lot of that force is translated to axial force. So um, because it's free to rotate, um, the way that these, these forces will be transfer transferred is into axial force directly into the member. And that's the reason that it is so efficient and um, so broadly used in truss design because uh, members are able to take a lot more force in axial compression as opposed to bending moment forces and shear forces because uh, they have a lot more surface area to work with where the, the pressure is being applied. So this, um, this sort, these sorts of models or these sorts of uh, you know, behaviours or setups where you, you're releasing the degree of freedom allow the uh, members to be a lot more efficient um, in utilising their materials because you're applying the force axially um, where they're more able to, to take these uh, higher loads. Um, we can also look at some of the behaviour around the truss, sorry, the displacement. Um, we can see that it's sort of bowing out here because this is a fixed rigid member, but there's very little um, in terms of uh, deflection um, from the bending moment forces in the member as well. So that's another indicator that we are using the hinge um, connection at this point. So I hope that helps. Um, please feel free to comment or, um, or email us at support at skysip.com if you have any questions. Uh, we'd love to hear them. Otherwise, we hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you on the platform soon. Thank you.